Hello, and welcome to the Research Library video tutorials. In the previous tutorial, titled Strong's Concordance and the Septuagint, we explored integration of the Greek and Hebrew languages into the Research Library. In this tutorial, titled Web Buttons, we will examine the various operations available for web button programming. The last three setup tabs are used to activate and manage the 99 web buttons available within the research library. There are 16 operational groups of buttons based on their locations, along with a 17th group, which is used for semi-permanent storage of button information. Button targets can easily be swapped back and forth depending on current research needs. Button captions and control tip text are user-defined. The control tip identifies a button when the cursor is hovered over it. The field editor is available to edit the control tip text. Visible web buttons are identified by a check mark in the active column. To render a button active, it must be programmed in button setup. The first general help tutorial contains an introduction to web buttons at approximately the 740 mark. At the 850 mark is a section on programming web buttons to default to locally stored publications when internet access is unavailable. At 930 is an example of virtually splitting a book. At 1050 is an example of the special web buttons on the Septuagint tab, followed by those on the Strong's tab. Other web button examples will be presented in this tutorial. The first entry, called Main Top Number 1, is used to open the Bible Gateway website to a long list of Bible versions for the active verse. Compare the programmed URL with the actual URL for James 1.1. 1, 1. Notice the book name James has been replaced by the BK variable enclosed in asterisks. The chapter and verse have been replaced by the variables CH and VS, respectively, which are also enclosed in asterisks. The URL is targeted to recognize books 1 through 66, which is Genesis to the Revelation. The book variable is linked to one of the user-defined button book lists, in this example, List 5. The spelling and case of the books in this list matches the URL for the Bible Gateway website. For example, when the active book is 1st Peter, the research library replaces the BK variable with 1st Peter from this list. There are 20 columns for user-defined book names, of which 7 are in use in this tutorial. The book ID number can also be referenced with the BKID variable. Notice this Bible Hub site also uses book column 5. A URL can also reference multiple book columns, which will be demonstrated later. The second web button was programmed to open the Bible Atlas site of Bible Hub to the A portion of the index. The Bible Atlas menu allows quick access to any available map. Note the book variable columns BK and BK2 are set to zero when those variables are not used in the URL. There are currently 94 books in the system covering the Bible, Apocrypha, and some early writings. Therefore, setting the first and last book columns to 1 and 100 respectively ensures the MAPS website will open for all active books. The BK column is also set to 0 when the BKID variable is used. 
the BK ID variable is replaced by the book ID number in the first column of the book table. The book ID numbers for this URL is zero based, that is, it begins at zero for Genesis rather than one. When the book ID column is used, the BK2 column can be used to adjust the BK ID number up or down. Therefore, in this case, one is subtracted from the book ID number since it is zero based, which means the book of the Revelation is represented as 65 rather than 66. The number 3 button, LXX WH, for the Study Bible website, is programmed virtually identical to the Bible Gateway site. The only programming difference is the book name references a separate book name column, in this case, column 1. The two entries for button 4 access the lexicons for the Hebrew Old Testament and Stephanus New Testament on the Study Bible website. The Hebrew website is accessed for books 1 through 39, or Genesis to Malachi and the Greek website is accessed for books 40 to 66, or Matthew to the Revelation. The main bottom number 1 button is set up to access the eWord Today website, or alternately, a locally stored PDF commentary. The button path default determines the order of access. If set to web, an attempt will be made to open the URL first. If unsuccessful and a local file path is available, the file will be opened. If the Internet is unavailable, set the default to File for faster access to local books. A locally stored PDF commentary can be split into multiple books or parts to accommodate current research. For example, this commentary by Adam Clark contains Romans to the Revelation. Each individual book can be split away from the others for separate access. There is an example of splitting the Revelation away from the rest of the commentary in the first general help tutorial at approximately the 8.30 mark. This web-based John Gill commentary on the eWord Today website demonstrates an example of borrowing a book name. The URL contains the same book name twice except for Book 22, The Song of Solomon. Book Column 2 is used for both variables, BK and BK2, except for the second part of Song of Solomon, which borrows an abbreviated name from Book Column 6. Highlighted are the names associated with the first and second book variables. The chapter number is located to the right of the second name. During the development of this tutorial, the eWord Today website URL was changed to Christianity.com, and attempts to access eWord Today were automatically rerouted to the new URL. When this occurs, simply change the name of the URL in Web Button Setup. The Web Buttons on the Concordance tab can be programmed for context-sensitive access based on the active verse. They can also be programmed to open dictionaries, concordances, encyclopedias, and other websites to search text typed into the search box by use of the concordance variable. The research library will replace CONC, the concordance variable, with the text in the concordance search box. All nine concordance web buttons can be programmed to take advantage of this research tool. There are similar examples in the Keyword Concordance tutorial at about the 1210 mark. The web buttons on the Publications form have been programmed to access Christian publication websites where books can be accessed or downloaded.
The setup of a web button for direct access to a website is simply a matter of pasting the URL into the URL field. Setting the BK and BK2 variables to zero and setting the first and last book columns to cover the entire range of books in the book lookup table. Some URLs, such as these from the HTML Bible website, contain formatted books, chapters, and or verses to establish common lengths. Formatted URLs consist of zeros enclosed in number signs located to the left of variables, all of which are enclosed in asterisks. As shown, the actual URL uses zeros as placeholders to format the book and chapter for two and three numbers, respectively. In this example, any book number less than 10 will have a leading zero, and any chapter less than 100 will have at least one leading zero. These buttons can be programmed to access the current Strong's number in the respective forms. This is the Bible Hub website. Five different websites can be programmed for each of the two forms. Programming these ten buttons is simply a matter of replacing the Strong's number in the URL with the Strong's number or SN variable. These buttons have been programmed in parallel so that the same analytical tools are made available for the numbers on each form. The Storage section provides a place to store a button setup for later use. Multiple setups could be established for a single web button, such as these commentary websites for the footnote web button. To change the target website for the footnote button, copy the URL of a website into memory. Paste into the Footnotes web button URL and click the Refresh button to update. Any number of URLs for the 99 web buttons can be stored in any of the 50 storage sections, significantly enhancing the flexibility of the research library. This concludes the web button tutorial. The next research library video tutorial is titled System Setup. Thank you for watching.